Hi everyone, welcome back. So the Sephora Spring Savings event is approaching quickly and I'm going to be giving you all of my recommendations ranging from skincare, hair care, body care, and of course, makeup. I'll put the sale dates up on screen so you can take a little screenshot, but I have a lot of good things to recommend here, so let's just get into it. I only have two skincare products to recommend. I've been using a lot of Korean skincare or skincare products you can't get at Sephora, but these are my two faves that you can. The first one being the First Aid Beauty Brighten and Glow Eye Cream with Niacinamide. Not only does it brighten my under eyes, the more I use it with consistency, it does right away. So you can see here, it has a little bit of a tint and some added glow, which I love on the days I'm not wearing any makeup because it just brightens my under eyes kind of like a skincare concealer and it's just very flattering and I just love the effect, both the topical and skincare wise. I've been recommending this cream for years. It's always my go-to cream whenever I'm having some skin concerns. Um, back in September, I had a little bit of perioral dermatitis and this really helped to calm and ease that and ever since that rash I've been using this as my nightly moisturizer as you can see I'm getting a little low on it I might have to restock this sale as well what's so nice about this cream is it's really nice and rich and thick feeling but once it's on your skin it melts right in and hydrates your skin perfectly but it doesn't leave like that heavy feeling that most thicker creams do it's super calming and amazing for people with sensitive skin it's gentle and it does the most. Still, most nights I will double cleanse my face and go in with this alone and that's it. And that's what's made my skin come to this point. If you've been following my channel for years, you know how much of a roller coaster I've gone through with my skin and I've just found the simpler the better. Getting into body care, I have a new favorite body cleanser and it's this one from Youth to the People. First of all, the scent is glorious. That's what won me over first. To me, it smells like a nice morning walk in a fresh, warm forest. Hold on, I need to get a sniff. Oh, it's just so nice. It has some of the notes on the side here. It has cedarwood, black pepper, and fresh greens. But besides its beautiful smell, it does a really good job at cleansing my skin. It gets me really nice and clean, but it doesn't overstrip my skin. Like whenever I get out of the shower, even in the wintertime, my skin felt fresh and nourished and hydrated without feeling like that squeaky residue feeling. I also love how this product has niacinamide in it. My skin loves niacinamide, so this just helps to keep my overall tone very even, and all the, the good things that come with niacinamide. The whole Youth to the People body line is beautiful. I recommend everything from it, but this was the thing that made the most impact on my life recently. I especially love the hand wash and the hand and body cream, but I think this is going to be something I repurchase time and time again when I go through it. This next body care product, is pretty much a Sephora recommendations staple. I think it's been in every single one I filmed, but it's the KP Bump Eraser from First Aid Beauty. This is a physical body scrub, but it also has 10% AHA. So if you, this is incredible for people who have KP. If you don't know what that is, I'm kind of wearing the perfect shirt for this. It's the little bumps that some people have on the back of their arms. Um, I'm having kind of like a flare up right now, but this is really helping at keeping them really nice and flat and not raised. But in complete honesty, this is one of the best body scrubs in general. Even if you don't have KP, it's awesome. It doesn't, it's not like a salt or sugar based scrub. It actually feels a little sandy, so it doesn't just dissolve right away when you're working it on your skin. It stays exfoliating until you wash it off. So I often use this on my legs as well, or even on the back of my legs, especially if I've been wearing a lot of like active wear and I get the little bumps from wearing like spandex materials. So if you have any little bumps or things you really want to get in there and exfoliate, this stuff is awesome. They also just released one that has a fresh strawberry scent and I was like, oh my God, this is even more catered to me now. I don't know if the strawberry one is available at Sephora yet. This is the only one I have on hand now, but the strawberry scent is a really nice addition. I'm a big fan. I think they still carry the unscented version and the strawberry if you want that, which I do. I always will opt for something strawberry. Now let's jump into hair care and I have some really good items here. Let's start with this hair mask. This is my favorite hair mask of all time. It's the Fable and Main Holy Roots Hair Mask. It is delightful. It's super, super rich and nourishing and very creamy. A little bit of it goes 
through your hair really nicely. I will spritz my hair a little bit with water just to make uh, the most out of the product, but then I'll leave it in for as long as I can before I hop in the shower. And it always leaves my hair feeling really silky and not frizzy and perfectly rehydrated. It's a winter must have for me. I featured these next products in my last favorites video. So I'll have that link down below if you wanna see these products in action because I filmed some demo clips for that video. But these K18 products have transformed my hair and beyond shocked at where my hair is at now. I don't think I've ever had so many compliments on my hair recently for its shine, the health level, all of it, honestly. And it's all due to these products. But let's talk about the shampoos first. I was silly and I ripped off the label when I was waiting for an in-shower hair mask to set in. Present me is very annoyed with past me, um, but I have the detox shampoo and the pH maintenance shampoo that preps your hair for the mask. So I wash my hair one to two times a week and when I'm in the shower, I will decide and assess which shampoo I should use more. If I'm going to be using the hair mask, I do go in with the pH maintenance just to really prep my hair for the best results. Or if I feel like my hair has a lot of buildup and I've been using a lot of products like dry shampoos and other hair oils and hairsprays and, and all of those types of things, I will use my detox one. And this one's amazing. It does a great job at removing all of the product, all of the sebum. And if you are someone with bleached hair, it also does a great job at removing the copper in your hair. These have been the best match for my hair type. I have very thin and fine hair and most shampoos tend to make me really greasy quickly, but these are so light but hydrating at the same time that my hair lasts for a whole week without me having to really wash it. I've truly never been so happy about shampoos in my life. Like these are the perfect match for me. But now we must highlight the real star of the show, which is the leave-in molecular repair hair mask. This stuff does the most. After years and years and years of heat styling my hair, this stuff has brought back my natural curl pattern, which you'll be able to see in my favorites video. I have a few videos of my journey with this stuff, but it's incredible. And I feel like a lot of people have unrealistic expectations from this product. I think a lot of people go into it thinking it's going to feel really silky and creamy and almost like a leave-in conditioner when you're putting it through your hair. It kind of just sinks into your hair and kind of feels like it disappears, um, but it's going into all of your hair strands and it's rebuilding those bonds, but it does not leave like a silky feel to your hair. So after I apply this and let it set in for a bit in my damp hair, I will follow up with a leave-in conditioner, which I have one I'll highlight in a bit. And I have one more K18 product to spotlight. It's the Molecular Repair Hair Oil. And this is my new favorite hair oil. I love how light it is in my hair. I only use three to four drops um, and it adds so much shine, but it doesn't completely destroy my curl that I put in that day it doesn't make my hair feel heavy or greasy. It just feels like really fresh, nice hair and it lasts for days. Like I don't have to continue reapplying this throughout the week. Just once is fine and my hair is nice and hydrated and frizz free. It's awesome. And like I hinted, I have this leave-in conditioner that I adore from Kerastase. It's the beautifying detangling blow dry mist. This is awesome, especially if you're going to be doing kind of like a blowout style, but still feeling really nice and silky and hydrated. Some leave-in conditioners will make your hair feel beautiful, but it will destroy any volume you try to put into it. Um, this just does it all for me. This is another product I'm going to have to repurchase this sale. I have like two drops in here, it's very light. Now let's get into the biggest chunk of today's video, which is makeup. Starting with this, this has been my favorite first step in my makeup routine lately. It's the First Aid Beauty's Bronzing Glow Drops with Niacinamide. I adore these. I've tried lots of bronzing drops in the past and a lot of them make my skin look really dirty or too shimmery or too dark, but these ones are perfect in my opinion. I love the shimmer in here. It's really nice and fine. It's not too glittery. And the bronzing part of these drops is really nice and smooth and easy to blend out. It doesn't get patchy, nor does it like fall into my pores and make my skin look dirty. It's just a smooth experience every single time. These are completely gorgeous and they're really putting me in the summer mindset. <laughs> Now let's get into my favorite foundations that you can get at Sephora. So my all-encompassing favorite foundation ever is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. I love how reliable and customizable this foundation is. I can achieve a very lightweight, light coverage look or a full glam, 
full coverage look with just one product. And it also always looks natural and super skin-like on my skin. I reach for this foundation for any occasion from running errands to the most important life events. I know this is going to look fantastic on my skin. I know it's going to work with any other makeup product and you can achieve most skin finishes with this. You can make it look really dewy. You can make it look like a natural skin-like finish or you can super mattify it. It's incredible. This next one is the Givenchy Skin Caring Glow Foundation. And this is a great one if I want kind of a hybrid of a skin tint and a foundation in one. If I just want really fresh looking, perfected, but still see-through type of skin look, this is my go-to. It is striking every single time. The glow is incredible, but it's not too sticky or dewy feeling. It's super lightweight and thin on the skin. It's just all of the things I want when I'm in that certain mood. My newest favorite foundation has been the Urban Decay Face Bond. It's what I've been using since I tried this product. So first of all, it's really cool. It's a three-in-one type of product. So of course it's a foundation first, but it's also a skincare serum. It's a niacinamide serum. And it also has a built-in setting powder. So I don't need to set this with powder if I don't feel like it. And it has the most beautiful velvety blurring look to it. I am wearing it on my skin today, but I do have some glow giving products underneath and on top of it. So you're not really getting the full effect of the super softening look that this can achieve. But this has been incredible for my oilier skin and I can't wait to see how this performs in the summertime when my skin's the oiliest. This stuff lasts on me all day. At the end of the day, it looks as fresh as the moment this stuff went on. It doesn't budge, it doesn't move. It's super transfer resistant. It's crazy. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, so if you have a similar skin type to me, definitely try it. But I know this also works for drier skin types if you have the correct skin prep. It's concealer time. I'll start with this one. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. This is my day-to-day go-to for sure. I love how this looks on bare skin without any foundation and it also pairs beautifully with most foundations as well. I find this to be very customizable, just like the foundation. So on my no foundation days, this looks like a really pretty serum slash eye brightener slash concealer hybrid. It pairs really well with just bare skin. It's seamless, but it's not going to add like a complete mask under the eye or in the areas I apply this. But pairing this with a foundation is very easy. It works well with all of the foundations I use. I just love how it does it all. It corrects, it smooths, it blurs a little bit, it brightens, all of it. And you can also alter what kind of coverage you want from it, from light to full. But if I'm wanting coverage, my favorite concealer is the Tower 28. I love how seamless and natural this looks on my skin, but it's so full of coverage and I'm like, how does that even work? I don't know. It's incredible under the eye as well as a foundation I have found and you only need a little bit so you're not going to run through it very, very quickly. But the last VIB sale, I stocked up on every shade I needed throughout the year and more. Um, some of these are foundation shades for me and some of them are just for my under eyes only. I love this consistency. It's very softening and diffusing and it just corrects anything. This has become my all-in-one concealer and it also does a fantastic job at spot correcting. Time for some setting powders. My favorite loose powder ever is the Givenchy one and it's the perfect time to try this out because you can get it at a lower price. I know this is like outrageously expensive, but it's so worth it in my opinion. It's so ultra blurring, diffusing, corrective, brightening, all of it. It's everything I want in a powder and more. I especially love this under my eyes. It's so softening and it sets all of my concealers perfectly. I will mention that this does have a little bit of a pearly shimmer. It's very fine though, but it does have a little bit of a glow giving aspect to it as well. What's awesome about this, you can also get it in a smaller size, just in case if you don't wanna to commit to the big boy. I wanted to include a loose powder and a pressed powder, and I'm really getting into the Kosas Cloud Set again. I have been setting my face with a powder puff with this stuff, and it's so pretty. It's so pretty. With a powder puff, it's ultra diffusing and blurring, and it also adds another layer of coverage, just a tint, just a little bit of a tint. I've been opting for a more matte finish with my skin lately, and this has been achieving it beautifully. My skin's actually getting a little shiny now, so I'm going to take my powder puff with a touch of this. I still smoosh it in my palm, and then I'll press it into my skin. And this is still one of my favorite powders to blot with. 
and I like to go over the edge of my blush just to make it that much more blended and seamless. And then I'll take a powder brush just to make sure there's no like stamp marks. This here is my favorite setting spray of all time. It's the Charlotte Tilbury one. I love how this one just does it all. It makes my makeup stay on all day, but also if I'm getting a little bit too powdery or if my makeup is starting to look a little too cakey or, or if my face is just looking too makeup-y, this will fix it. Adding a nice layer of this will just help to melt everything together, kind of rehydrate it all, and it just usually makes everything okay again. These are some newer favorite brow things, but they have been revolutionary for me and my lazy brow routine, starting with the Urban Decay Big Bush Brow. This is my favorite tinted brow gel ever now. I love this stuff because, well, for so many reasons. A lot of them sometimes just act like a tinting gel and it doesn't offer much hold and this, that, and the other, but this one does. And another thing that I really, really love about this is that it adheres really well to my skin underneath of my brows. So sometimes if I'm in a rush, I can just kind of fill in my brows like this as I would with a brow pencil. It also is very fibrous, so it kind of bushes up your brows more than just tint them. And this stuff right here, the Ko-Fi Brow Gel, revolutionary for my brows. It is incredible. This is awesome, especially if you like to go for a more laminated brow look or if your brows are very stubborn and they tend to disobey you and go every which way instead of the way that you want them, this will cure that. This has the strongest hold of any brow gel I've ever tried. It's also very flattering because it doesn't get all white and crummy throughout the day, which a lot of these kind of laminating brow gels do these days. And it also comes with a really nice dual-ended brush on the end so you can really shape them and get your desired brow look. I just love how this brow gel made my brow routine so much easier and quicker. That's my ultimate goal. <laughs> Getting into bronzers, I have two here. I wanted to include a cream and a powder. We all know what the cream is. It's the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer, of course. <laughs> I used the shade Light today and I so happened to hit pan on it today, so that was fun. It's a bronzing balm, so it's very sheer, but it also does the most. I've been talking about this stuff ever since it came out. We all know how much of a fan favorite this stuff is right here, so I'm just going to move on to this really sad story here. This is the Huda Beauty Glowish Bronzer, and I wanted to make sure you all knew that Glowish is not going to be here for that much longer. Uh, she did post a YouTube video explaining that she's going to be revamping her brand a little bit, and Glowish is going to be no more soon, which made me really sad because I am so in love with the bronzer. It's so good for so many reasons. It's very unique for a powder bronzer. It's subtle, but very impactful. There's also a glow from within pearl included in here. It makes you look glowy and radiant, but it stays all day because it has all of the benefits of a powder, of course. Ugh. Sad story. So if you are a fan of this bronzer, maybe take this opportunity of the sale to get some backups, or if you've been wanting to try this, maybe this is your time, maybe don't. What if you get hooked and then you can't get it anymore? That'd be really sad, but do what you will. I just wanted to let you guys know. It's now blush time. <laughs> so my favorite blush of the year has been the Makeup Forever Artist Blush in the shade Wherever Rose. That's just my preferred shade, but there's also a ton of other beautiful colors as well. But this is Wherever Rose. It's my perfect everyday color. I feel like it suits my skin tone so nicely and just my overall coloring and what I like to wear every day. It's really nice and rosy, but there's a touch of like a sunburnt hue that I just can't get enough of. And this formula is delightful. It's very, very silky and fine to the touch. It also has a little bit of like a hydrated feel to it too, which is awesome. I feel like those types of blushes always kind of lock in and stay there all day. Um, it adheres really well to like a set powdered face. Um, it also is very nice and diffusing and blurring. It has an effect of like a translucent powder touch, but there's a lot of pigment in there and they're beautiful. I also have two other shades. I have this one. Um, Limitless Berry, which I would say is like a stronger version of Wherever Rose. And I also have Anywhere Peach, which is like a really cute, dainty peach color. So pretty. Highly recommend you guys check those out. But those Makeup Forever ones remind me a lot of these icons, the Dior ones. But the Dior ones have a lot less pigment. These are like, I almost, I almost, what am I doing? I feel like, 
I almost called these silent but deadly. That is a horrible no, but when you swatch these they don't look like they're going to do much for you But you have to apply them onto your cheeks to get the magic out of them uh, That's when the hues really come alive and really brighten your face. I love how Sheer but impactful these are but that's better than silent but deadly <laughs> what, am I, what am I even thinking? Um, my three favorite shades have been of course the iconic pink one rosewood Which I would say is my most used this came out uh, their last time they expanded their shade range. I believe they came out with two new shades, which I'll have to check out, um, like a lilac shade and something else. Uh, but my last favorite color here is berry. It's a really pretty, mauvey, more purpley berry than we're used to seeing. I feel like when it comes to berry blushes, we're used to seeing them be very pinky and red and not purpley. So that's a fun one. I also always have to recommend the Patrick Ta ones. <laughs> And honestly, he feeds my addiction with these because he always brings out new colors and his last extension has become my favorite extension. I am wearing this shade right here. She's the moment all over my face. This is a full face of she's the moment. I used it as my blush, as my eye color here, a little bit on my lips too. I used the cream first and then I topped it with a gloss, but I've been loving doing a monochromatic moment with all of the new ones. So she's the moment, just enough right here, which is a really nice, soft, cool pink. And this one, which is a really beautiful, nudie color. And it's the shade Not Too Much. Those are definitely in my top four, but my number one favorite is still, oh, she's different. This one right here. And I'll have some footage included in here. I recently filmed a TikTok swatching every single one on my cheeks. I have two more blushes to go. This one's a cream. It's the Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veils. My favorite shade is Barely Blushing. It's just kind of like a nice color to go in with every day. It's very sheer. I love wearing this on kind of like clean, no makeup makeup days or days I just want like very subtle makeup. It adds a really nice tint without being too much or too subtle. It's just like the perfect balance between the two. Um, these are really nice and balmy, very easy to blend, stunning shades as well. You can't go wrong. And my last blush recommendation has to be the Say Blushes. My most favorite shade is Chili. We all know that. I often neglect all of the other colors I have in these because of Chili. It's just one of the prettiest colors ever. I love how serum-y these ones feel. They're very glow-giving, very skincare in a blush vibe. <laughs> but I also love the shade Spicy. This one's a little bit more heavily pigmented, but it's so pretty and bronzy, especially if I'm going for a more sun-kissed look. But they also have a newer shade extension. This is the shade Baby, which we saw in a holiday collection around Christmas time but now that they brought it back in full size and permanent. They also have this one, which is a nice softer everyday pink. It's the shade Sweetie. Has a little bit more peach and warmth to it. And Cutie, which is like a nice everyday nudie. <laughs> there we are. It almost looks like these two had a baby and created this, hey? So if you know me, you know I'm such a tough critic when it comes to highlighters, but these have ignited something within me <laughs> These are the Forever Glow Maximizer highlighters and they have some really fun shades as well as you can see These are my three favorites. So this one is pink. I love wearing this on the days I have a lot of pink hues in my makeup. I love the glow that it adds without being too glittery or shimmery They also have this one here, which is what made me most excited for this line. It's the shade rosy It has a little bit of a copper tone to it too, which I think will be adorable in the summertime. I love the gold one too. That's the shade I'm wearing today. And this is the one I've been wearing the most. They have such a nice satin sheen, super easy to blend out. The only one I would say that kind of sticks out to me amongst the rest is the white one. That one has a little bit more of a chunkier glitter, more of a glimmery look to it. Otherwise they're very smooth and satiny. Now getting into some eyeshadow palettes. The first one I really wanted to recommend is of course the new Makeup by Mario palette. If you are someone who loves neutrals or cooler neutrals, you're going to love this, but his eyeshadow formula is fantastic to work with. You only need a little bit and they blend out very easily and they last throughout the day gorgeously as well. I also love traveling with these palettes. They're so nice and compact, but they still have some pretty good pan sizes. This has been the palette I've been reaching for every day since purchasing it. Another one I wanted to recommend that's kind of similar and a lot of people have been asking me 
which one I'd recommend more, and I recommend both of them. It's the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 3 palette. This is the one that has a cool toned row and a warm toned row with two creams. And I would say go with your gut. Go with the palette you feel like you're going to get use out of more. You can't go wrong either way, you're gonna be very happy. So I would say if you just wear cool tones or neutral tones, go with Makeup by Mario for sure. But if you like to dabble in warm, cool, and neutral, I'd say this one. Plus, if you love playing with eyeliner and different intensities, this one's great because you get a cream black and a cream brown, which kind of ups the versatility as well. You can use them as eyeliners, as bases to enhance the other shades, or just as cream eyeshadows. Both palettes have incredible formulas from two amazing makeup artists. The last palette is the Danessa Myricks Blooming Romance one, and I've been enamored by this palette. I think it is striking to look at and to work with. It's so fun to work with. If you didn't see my last video, highly recommend I just had a fun time pretty much smudging all of these shades on my face. Versatile products make my heart so happy. And this concept is really cool because you can use these as bronzers, contours, blushes, uh, eyeshadows, brow pomades, lip colors, lip liners, all of it. You can do pretty much anything with these except for foundation and concealer. Otherwise, you have everything you need in this palette. The cream side is really nice. It's a hydrated kind of cream to powder formula. And I've seen some comments asking about the cream formula in here and if it's going to dry out. I don't think so. It's very similar to the MAC Glow Play blushes and I've had those for years and they're still really nice and creamy. It's the type of formula that's going to take forever to dry out. I don't foresee that happening quickly, but this one does it for me because I'm such a blushaholic and a monochromatic look aholic. <laughs> I love when I can apply blush all over my face and have my look be really cohesive and beautiful and blended together, kind of like what I did today. I'm very passionate about eyeliner. Eyeliner is one of my favorite steps and these are my favorites. So if you are someone who's looking for a really good one for the waterline, but to also smudge and create like sharp eyeliners with, I would suggest the Milk Makeup Infinity Longwear Eyeliners. These ones are great. They wear well in the waterline. They're very smudge proof and fade proof and easy to work with as well. So kind of 10 tens all around. If you're looking for a good liquid liner, the Huda Beauty one is really good, especially if you like to do little inner corner details or if you have very watery eyes, this one will stay on through anything. I often have to like double oil cleanse my face to get this off, <laughs> but that's awesome for people with watery eyes. And if you like to add some eyeliner to really smudge them out, smoke them out, my number one recommendation would be the Makeup Forever Artist Pencils. I often use these as eye builders. I will start my eye look out with this and then build on top of it. I love how you can use these on your eyes as well as your lips, which will kind of lead us into my favorite lip liners as well shortly. But the tones that they offer are so beautiful. My favorites for the eyes are Limitless Brown, the black one, and Universal Earth as well as Total Taupe. So that's Total Taupe. This is Limitless Brown, which also doubles as a really good brown lip liner. The black is awesome for smudgy, smoky looks. It's my go-to for sure. And where is Universal Earth? Here you are. This is also one of my favorite lip colors. This on the eyes and lips, such a killer look. Um, these are very powdery feeling, so you have like unlimited smudge time with these. So you can see they just smoke out with ease. My hands are very dry, so they stuck them really well. <laughs> yeah, leading into lip liners, you can get kind of like a sharp lip look or a really softened lip look too. They're very blurring. They have good longevity. And again, the tones, the tones are everything. Look at these poor little baby pencils. I might have to repurchase some of these. This sale, the Tower 28 multi liners in the shade Work of Art. This is Work of Art. Oops, push too hard. Damn it. And fill me in here. Some of my two go-to lip liners. And again, you can use these on your eyes if you want to, but these aren't typically the tones I would put on my eyes. Um, but I like to have the option. <laughs> these remind me a lot of the Makeup Forever ones, but they have a little bit more of a waxy feel to them. So I feel like I can get an sh even sharper look in comparison to the Makeup Forever. But I have one more suggestion for lip liners at Sephora. They are the Huda Beauty Lip Contour 2.0s. My two favorite shades are Honey Beige, and pinky brown. 
you can kind of see what my favorite tones are here. <laughs> but this, it's nice to have them in different formulas too. I would say that these are the most dramatic in comparison. These kind of have like a softer finish. This is Anywhere Caffeine from Makeup Forever, just so you can kind of see the textures. So I would say that these are the most opaque and most dramatic. These are kind of in the middle and these are the softest. But now let's finish strong with my lip recommendations. So the one I'm wearing today over the blush is this. This is the Summer Fridays Lip Balm in Birthday Cake. This one's really pretty because it has a soft, glimmery shimmer to it. You can see there's a little bit of like a milky pink gloss, but it also has a really pretty peachy glitter. And it's a nice, comfortable glitter. It's not grainy whatsoever. It just makes you look like you have a lot more volume in your lips than you do. Um, I love how hydrating and nourishing this lip balm is, but it's also very, very glossy, which I love that. I love a two-in-one. Same thing goes here. I love this color in the Tower 28 Lip Softy. It's the shade Ube Vanilla. Ooh, it's so rich. And it's also very seamless and even on the lips. It's not streaky whatsoever. And that's awesome, especially for like a thicker, glossy product. Usually those kind of have weird buildup spots on the lips, but it's very smooth and consistent. Same situation here, just another different kind of color and different brand, of course. And the last product I wanted to recommend in today's video are the House Labs glosses. They are incredible. The tones are stunning. My favorite is this one right here, Fig. Ooh, I've modeled my new everyday go-to makeup look after this gloss. The tone is beyond pretty. It's like a nice brownie red color. Oh, it's so nice paired with Universal Earth from Makeup Forever. Oh, so nice. Or if I want something a little bit more toned down, I've been using Jones Road Rosewood. It creates the most beautiful lip look. Also, the gloss doesn't fall into my lips. It stays really well on my lips without bleeding outwards or inwards. <laughs> and those are all of my recommendations. I will be doing a shop with me and a try on, so keep your eye out for that. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I will have all of these things I recommended listed in the description box just to help you out. So feel free to check that out and I will see you in my next video. Bye.